All right, so we wanted to thank you all for coming this morning. We're really excited to talk to you a little bit about our nuclear train proposal. We've spent the past couple of weeks learning about the freight train industry, and we know that there are some concerns about the diesel fuel that we're using, how expensive it is and the pollution it produces. So we came up with the solution of a hybrid with a nuclear powered train and batteries. In order to develop a model that we could optimize our system with, we started with an energy balance. The energy balance is mostly dependent upon the velocity of the train, as well as the height um, which the train is going up. And so the first thing we did was develop a height and a velocity profile. These profiles are indicative of what a train would usually encounter in the freight industry. So you'll see on the height profile that it goes up two fairly decent hills, but they're not incredibly large. And then that the velocity profile starts and stops at the end, as if it were going into or out of a station and that the maximum is about 26 miles per or meters per second, which is the speed limit for the United States. The last part of the energy balance is a friction term, and that we decided to relate to the maximum velocity if the train were going full speed and we didn't have a speed limit, and then um, the proportional term of the energy. So the main backbone of our project was the nuclear reactor. We wanted to make sure that the size was about one rail car. That was the maximum size that we wanted. Uh, we fit it to an FOPT model. It had a very slow response time. It was about it had a tau of 1.2 hours. When we optimized it, we wanted the optimizer to prefer that over the batteries to make sure that we were using the nuclear as much as possible. And <coughs> we wanted to minimize the actual size of the nuclear reactor, so by doing that we minimize the maximum output. We were trying to make it fit this curve that you can see to the right, which was the combination of the high profile, velocity profile, all in that energy balance. <coughs> and we ended up with a nuclear reactor that was about three rail cars, three to four rail cars in size. So in order to compensate for the uh, slow response time of the nuclear reactor, it was necessary to use uh, an array of batteries to produce um, the energy where the nuclear reactor couldn't meet the demand. And so we modeled this, the change of the state of charge of the battery as the energy that the nuclear reactor could produce, um, and then subtracted off the demand that, uh, the, of energy the chain requ required. And um, in our um, optimizer, one of our objective functions was to minimize the number of batteries in our array. So to do this, we assumed uh, the volume of a standard rail car um, full of batteries and then found the energy that could be produced by this and then our set our state of charge to be always greater than 5% of this maximum energy that the array could produce. And after running the, the optimizer, we found out that really only 4% of the total volume of a rail car was required to, for an array of batteries to produce the uh, energy required. So in conclusion, as we were looking at our model, our model uh, works. We were able to get good results from it. Uh, the graph to the right shows <coughs> the energy profile with every piece of the model, including the batteries and the nuclear, as a fit. Now you'll notice that the set point for the nuclear is a lot higher than the nuclear actually ever reaches, and <coughs> that means that we're depending so much on the nuclear that we need a nuclear reactor that's so that's way too large just to get uh, just under 50% of what it's actually setting as the point. And this led us to a new conclusion about our train. And so, for future recommendations in optimizing this train further and potentially um, being able to use a nuclear reactor, we decided that since we were only using 4% of the volume of a, of a rail car full of batteries, that if we used a larger array, that we could reduce the size of the reactor required to still meet the demand of the energy required by the train, and thus allowing us to potentially fit this reactor into a single rail car. Thanks for listening. Any questions?